This is about a 38 year old lady who came for Doppler study due to unilateral leg swelling for the past few years. I am not giving the Doppler images, I am giving the X-ray of right leg and right foot. With the given images, please think about the findings in the given images. Think about the differential diagnosis and if it is possible, you can also think about the final diagnosis. If you want more time, please pause the video and go back to see the X-ray foot and the X-ray right leg. Are you ready? Let's go. So the X-ray uh, right leg and I think uh, X-ray uh, both legs are given. There is periosteal proliferation which is divided, which is observed in right tibia and fibula. So if you compare with the left one, you can see periosteal proliferation which is very thick and it is observed in the right tibia and fibula, not in the left tibia and fibula. You can compare that. The periosteal reaction of tibia and fibula is well recognized. In the magnified view, the right foot reveals well-defined focal lysis of the plantar aspect of big toe and of the medial aspect of second metatarsal bone near the tarsal aspect. In addition, extensive soft tissue thickening is present in the right leg and foot and the joints appear well preserved. So with these findings, what all the differential diagnosis we can, we can have? So the first and most common one we will think about is stress fracture or a fatigue fracture one. Second one is infection a chronic infection like chronic osteomyelitis the third one is subperiosteal hemorrhage due to scurvy or it can be due to trauma the fourth one is tumor and the fifth one is a deep venous stasis long standing venous stasis now i'll give you the additional information it has been there almost for the past 10 years the right leg swelling and it has been giving dull aching pain and she is a mother of two children of 15 and 13 years of age respectively. Doppler of the right lower lobe revealed complete recanalization of the common femoral and superficial femoral veins and partial recanalization of the popliteal vein and there is non-recanalization of tibial and peroneal veins with extensive collaterals from incompetent perforators due to chronic deep vein thrombosis. Deep ulcer is also noticed in the plantar aspect of big toe and in the medial forefoot. So the final diagnosis is unilateral hypertrophic osteoarthropathy of right leg by venous stasis due to poorly recanalized chronic deep vein thrombosis in popliteal and infrapopliteal veins. We can discuss about this. Hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy needs to be avoided as extra pulmonary causes of this entity are in a wide range from cardiovascular to hepatobiliary and abdominal diseases or neoplasms. Incidence of unilateral hypertrophic osteoarthropathy is rare accounting less than 10% incidence of hypertrophic osteoarthropathy. Causes of unilateral hypertrophic osteoarthropathy has been listed and has been already given as a DD. But in a child if it is there you have to think about non-accidental trauma which can be due to uh, battered baby syndrome or it can be due to uh, osteogenesis imperfecta. So venous stasis due to chronic venous insufficiency can cause hypertrophic osteoarthropathy unilaterally or bilaterally if venous system uh, one or both lower limbs has been thrombosed with or without recanalization. In venous insufficiency hypertrophic osteoarthropathy has been affected most commonly in the tibia and fibula and less commonly in the tarsal and metatarsal bones and in the femur. So this is not an easy quiz. I thank all of them for participated in this quiz. Dr. Gopinath is the real superstar who has given all the findings and has given the differential diagnosis and the complete final diagnosis. Great sir. Dr. Deepika who is the near superstar who has given all the findings and the DD and she has also given the final diagnosis. Superb ma'am, thank you very much for listening. Bye bye and take care.